Okay, welcome. The next one, the characteristics of the colonialism and post-colonialism. Post-colonialism. An awareness of representation of the non-European and exotic or immoral other. Immoral other. Okay? Everywhere you will see that they treated us other. As a result, they have also mentioned that we are Oriental, they are the Occidental. Edward Said clearly mentioned, and no one still now could what? Deny his theories. We are treated as a or Oriental. And they treated as a Occidental. Superior. We are the inferior. They are the us and we are the other. And awareness of the trained nature of the colonizers language thus using a involves acquit what acquiescing uh, acquiescing to colonial structure and awareness of the double nature of identity both colonizer and colonized double nature obviously we had also the double nature how as a colonized people how I have that for example he has mentioned that sir I am doing a job and word here my madam boss is a colonizer what? Colonizer. And I am colonized. But his tendency, his attitude, his behavior is also like them whenever he deals with his he what? Workers or someone else. And he becomes a what? In that time, colonizer. And his workers, laborers, or the colleagues become a colonized one. <coughs> it means of what? We have, we have the double tendency. How we have learned it? We have learned it through the colonialism. Okay. Next of what? And the awareness of cross-cultural interaction as demonstrated in three stages. Cross-cultural interactions. What are they? First of all, adopt <coughs> the three terms in beginning theory. It is also depicted. Peter Berry has mentioned that adopt, adapt, adapt. What are that? And adopt and adopt European form and subject matter similar to the feminine, feminine stays in feminism. We are trying to subject matter formation everything of the word Western. That is called the adopt. I mean, so what? Directly you are copying from the Western. You are imported that that one. You say that, sir, whenever I visited Canada, I have seen that this is a classroom, I want to make it. And I will apply it. What does it mean? It's an adopt. But you are not thinking. You don't think whether I can apply it or not. What does it mean that? You have lost your power because of the colonial impact. Next one, adapt. Adapt, adapt European form to African subject matter. Similar to the feminist stage in feminism. Subject matter. But the form is a different. I mean support form is the local it's a mixture of both. So mukhtara, both. Cross. That is called of what? Adapt. Adopt, adapt. And third one is what? Adapt. And or independent form or the subject matter. For example, Michael Modishan Dotto or Rundra. They what? They use their subject matter, but they follow the structure of the Western. That is, which category? Second one. Joshi He used his own form, his own subject matter, everything is all taken from where? His own land. That is called a what? At an independent. Third one. First one is, at the very first, Michael Mudishudan, whenever he attempted to write everything, in English, subject matter in English, sub and the structure is in English. Even nowadays, I have already mentioned Kaiser Hawk, Tamina Anam, Niyazi, they are trying to write everything in English and what highlights the Western culture, theories. That is a what? First one. Okay? So, three stages we have seen that, and the post colonial literature tries to highlight these things. Okay? Fourth one of what? Appropriation of colonial language. Authors use a native language within their writing. Then rewriting history. The British 
root the histories of the empires they conquered. I have already explained once again. I am telling this post colonial writers don't like the version of history. Which history? They reject the Western history. And it's a version that cast colonizers as heroes, as the rescuers who saved everyone from the ignorance and darkness. So post-colonial writers said about writing history from their own perspective, showing how colonialism was actual a pretty violent, terrible thing. More importantly, these writers also show how history is a matter of perspective and there are always many perspectives. There is no one true history. There is no him. History is true. I mean, so what? In the very earlier, we have mentioned that revisited the, uh, revised the, revised history. And post-colonial writers try to do it. I mean, so what? They first of all challenges the Western history. Then their truthness. The death of the information. Okay? Next one. Biolization of cultural identity. Biolization of cultural identity. In which way they have uh, presented the biolization of cultural identity? You know how a big justification for colonialism was basically that the culture of colonized peoples were inferior to those of Europeans. Well, post-colonial writers challenges this idea and they do this by valorizing their own indigenous culture. You have got religion. You have, sorry, you have got a word, religion. They say to the colonizer. So do we, what? You have got culture. What does it mean that? Just a few minutes ago I mentioned they come with the Bible and this is our land. After opening the eyes we have seen that the land is there. Bible is ours. What does it mean? They have that, they have asked that, have you got religion? Whenever we say that yes, in that time we have seen that it is not the religion, it is their culture. I mean so what? We have lost our own identity. Own identity. As a result, we are feeling we are uh, have we seen the we see the culture of uh, crisis of identity, crisis, crisis of identity. Next one, nationhood and nationalism. Nationhood and nationalism. It is another characteristic of post-colonialism. Okay. Post-colonial writers are really interested in nationhood and nationalism. In nationhood and nationalism. A lot of these writers are very patriotic. They write books on behalf of their nation, on behalf of their nation. Their work is open nationalist because post-colonial writers like to highlight and valorize their nation's cultural, political and social identity. So, you, you see that in our country, when Rajivadri started writing and he becomes popular, he was leveled as polygamy. Absolutely, he is not a polygamy. He is a national poet. Why he is labeled polygamy? To humiliate him. He is not a what? Civilized one. He has imported a word. The local thing, rotten things, absurd things. These are things. So, what does it mean that? You have to know that your history, revisit your history. It means a word. Whenever you see that a writer has imported a word, his own nation's culture, politics and social identity, religion, norms, values, everything. You must say that he is a post-colonial writer or you can say that he is a nationalist writer. He is a nationalist n n writer. Got my point? Yes, sir. Then what? Post-colonial uh, post critics do. These uh, points are taken uh, from actually uh, beginning theory, Peter Berry, written by Peter Berry. What they do? First of all, reject claims to universalism and seek to show its general inability to emphasize across boundaries of cultural and ethnic differences. They try to highlight of what? Inability. We have a lot of barriers, a lot of inabilities they try to overcome these things. Okay? Next one is of what? 
examine representation of other cultures in literature examine the representation what does it mean that the post colonial tries whenever the western people or the other people we is not your own native own country's people when they write their own culture this type of critics tries to what examine them find out them why they have used it because at the very beginning we have mentioned that post colonialism tries to what identify the nature of application nature of application in which way they try to mechanism of power we have already mentioned that mechanism of power mechanism of their power okay mechanism of their culture everything they try to examine in their text next one show how such literature is silent and matters concerned with colonized and imperialism show how the literature is silent and of what on matters concerned with colonization and imperialism so it is also that in which way it is actually silent your culture why your culture is silent in your text why not to find out it also do who do who do it the post colonial critics okay next one for ground questions of cultural difference and the diversity obviously they will also focus on what why we are culturally divided differentiated there must have some reasons either it is political cultural religious or regional or something else they try to find out it next one celebrate hybridity whereby individuals and group belong simultaneously to more than one culture next see states of marginality plurality perceive otherness as sources of emer what energy and potential changes so it is also highlight in literature which post colonial critics tries to try to find out these things next of what purposes why you need to read the post colonial literature post colonial theories post colonial writer uh, critics you should know what is their task the purpose is there to find and reestablish their lost national identity First of all, to find and re-establish them. Not only to find. You have found the sir. I have got. I have got. Why we have lost our what identity? It is not enough. You must give a suggestion in which way you can you can what re-establish your own identity or culture in your own land to your own people. They what give the suggestion as well or they suggest it as well. Then of what history and literature and to define author's relationship with the land and language of their former master. master. That is also important. Colonizer. I mean support colonizer and colonized people, the relationship between colonizer and colonized people. It is also shown through this as well. To open a space where the residual effects of colonialism can be resisted. then who are the oppressed those who are formally colonized they are the oppressed in post colonial theory the word colonized can mean many things what are the first of all literal colonization more abstract of colonization that is a word the relationship african american native american in the united states so you have seen that in the united states now it as we have seen that number of groups is they are the indian american they are the african american they are the muslim american what does it mean that red indians etc etc what does it mean that whenever you can tag them you can label them saying it what does it mean their values has been shifting we have already said that their tendency to what to shift your values that's why they label it otherwise not obviously when i visit there i am a foreigner but whenever you are a citizen of the usa they should not have any of what 
discrimination. For example, in Myanmar, you have seen that there are three types of citizens. Three types of citizens. Rohingya, they have no citizenship. They have no citizenship. What does it mean? That discrimination is indulged in the constitution of Myanmar. Similarly, they have done it. Okay? How was the colonizer oppressed? Post-colonial theorists believe that colonizers, generally Europeans, impose their own values onto those colonized so that they were internalized. Second one, social, cultural, Spanish language, or the Catholic religion in the Caribbeans. Actually, it is highlighted in the Caribbeans. Similarly, if we see that in our countries, they have applied a word, uh, English language. Uh, political geo, the boundaries of Africa based on European politics rather than tribal interest. Whenever you try to highlight a tribal interest in that time or what, you may not give the importance of European politics or European things. Whenever you give, started giving the value on what? European things, what's happened? You are destroying your own tribal things. Got my point? And few minutes you will take only. How did the oppressed escape? Post-colonial theorists also analyzed the process by which those who who were colonized resisted the colonizers. Examples: what? Haiti, South Africa, India. These are the examples where they have what? They have established their colonization. Next of what? When exactly post-colonial began? First of all, when third world intellectuals have arrived in the first world academy, he who told it? Or a relic. He says that yes. Whenever they have, for example, Edward W. Sy, the last class I mentioned that he was not an American. He, uh, he was not born in Philistine, he was born in Israel. But whenever he was driving away to America, he started there living as a slum boy. And he got education. Later on, he became the teacher of a university of America. Then he could understand that in which way the third world country people were suppressed. What does it mean that this is the age of the time when the third world intellectuals have arrived in the first world regarding Clear? Okay, next one. Already I have mentioned that. His name. Who is he? Edward W. Sight. Edward W. Sight. Most colonial discourse into the first world academy and into the literary and cultural theory. We all, uh, he was also, I mean, uh, Edward Sight was also very, in, what, influential in third world universities. Then what? He coined the term Orientalism. He coined the term Oriental and he explained himself what is the intention applying the terms of Orientalism. Okay? I mean through the Orientalism he tries to in which the Western see us what is their lens what they are intention to uh, what? Apply after teaching their own language. And it is uh, Edward Sais, Gayatri Chakraborty Spivak. We have already mentioned her name. She is a teacher of Columbia University and somewhere else. And it is of what? Hmm? Example of Orientalism. Aladdin. Arabian, I see have got. It has intentionally done. Then Humike Baba, he is also another theorist, a post colonial theorist. Okay? Humike Baba, Indian post-colonial, the name signifies it. Then, of course, another name is Franz Fanon. He has written two uh, greatest book. One is, one is very important. You may have heard the name of the book. White Mask, Black Skin. White Mask, Black Skin. It was written by Franz Fanon. What does it mean by frequently? Fair and lovely is a mask, white mask. Under the mask, you are disguising your black skin. It what introduces to you for what reason? 
to make their profit it is also then the aftermath and remember you can uh, read it at home so post colonialism just to see the picture the images imperialism okay so you have seen that a long and large thank you for you thank you everyone today